Over time, Orange County developed into one of the most productive agricultural regions in the state of California. The next great historical force to affect Orange County arrived on steel rails. Trains, such as this 1880s steam locomotive now in use at Knott's Berry Farm, helped open vast areas of the West, including Orange County. Steve Donaldson is an authority on the railroad history of Southern California. As new lands were added to the United States, there was a need for increased transportation and communication with the eastern seaboard, and the railroads were the solution to that problem. Railroads provided a more economical and a more rapid means by which people could travel from east to west and by which they could receive the goods and materials that they needed to set up their pioneer communities. The first railroad to be built in Orange County was a branch of the Southern Pacific, which came down from Los Angeles to Anaheim. This line was built in 1874 and opened for service in 1875. There were mixed feelings about whether this was going to be a benefit or not to this area, and in fact a vote was held in order to determine whether bonds would be floated, taxes levied in order to subsidize the construction of this road. The people of Orange County actually voted against it because they felt that the cost was greater than the benefit would be, but because Orange County was then a part of Los Angeles, and Los Angeles County as a whole voted in favor of the project, Orange County received its first railroad really over its own objection. In spite of initial reservations, the railroad proved to be quite an economic benefit to Anaheim and Orange County at large. No longer did merchants and farmers have to haul their crops all the way by wagon over dusty and sometimes very muddy roads to either Anaheim Landing or San Pedro Bay. The Southern Pacific had a literal monopoly on railroad transportation in Orange County for approximately 10 years, until in 1887, the Santa Fe built down through the Santa Ana Canyon and became the second transcontinental railroad to provide service to this area. A fierce competition soon developed between these two major transcontinental railroad companies. Rates were reduced, which induced people living in the Midwest and the eastern states to come to California to try a new way of living. The Southern Pacific and the Santa Fe took it upon themselves to literally sell Southern California to the rest of the country. As a result, thousands and thousands of people came to California and began looking at the land. Dr. Glenn Dumke is Chancellor Emeritus of the California State University System and author of the best-known book on the boom of the 1880s. Well, the boom of the 80s in Southern California did the same thing for that part of the state that the gold rush did for the northern part. Uh, the gold rush made Northern California a part of the United States, and the real estate boom of the 80s uh, made Southern California a real part of the United States. The boom in Orange County greatly benefited a number of existing communities, especially Orange, Santa Ana, and Anaheim. And it gave rise to several new ones, including Buena Park and Fullerton. The founders of Fullerton, Edward and George Hammeridge viewed rail service as being key to the growth of their new community. They were able to persuade a prominent Santa Fe Railroad official, George Fullerton, to provide service to their town in return for a generous land bonus. The rail link was considered so vital that the Hammeridge brothers decided to honor Fullerton in perpetuity by naming their town after him. While Fullerton survived, Many other boom towns didn't. Fairview, St. James, and McPherson are but a few of the many paper towns that failed despite the dreams of their promoters. Another uh, of these towns was Carlton, which was located near the mouth of Carbon Canyon. Carlton uh, resembled some other boom projects which did not survive. It was uh, located uh, at an elevation uh, but the elevation deprived it of access to water. And uh, the lack of uh, water and irrigation facilities uh, obviously brought it to a quick end. The boom in general was beneficial uh, to California. It uh, improved the economic activity and uh, uh, accelerated it very violently for a short time. But when it declined uh, in 1888 and 1889, uh, it did not 
decline to the levels previous to the boom. And that, of course, has been the characteristic of California's economic development all through its history. Another important effect of the boom occurred in the political arena. When the boom began, present-day Orange County was still part of Los Angeles County, as it had been since California statehood. But as the population grew, there was increasing pressure to create a separate county. Pamela Hallen Gibson, who has written widely on the history of Orange County, recalls the long and often heated battle for county formation. In 1869, Max von Strobel, the mayor of Anaheim, sponsored a bill in the state legislature to carve a new county out of the lower third of Los Angeles County. He and others were tired of paying taxes and not seeing anything in return. They were also tired of having to deal with officials that were all appointed from the north. And they were physically tired of having to take a buggy ride all day long just to get to the county seat in Los Angeles. So Max sponsored this bill called the New County of Anaheim. Max von Strobel led a vigorous effort to get the bill through the state legislature, but it failed to garner enough votes. The first failure didn't really stop the people from Anaheim. They went back and they rethought the whole process and decided, well, maybe the name hadn't been quite right. Maybe it sounded a little too foreign. They finally settled on the name Orange County. Were there oranges in production at that time? No, but that didn't stop them. They thought the name was kind of nice. It evoked the image that they wanted to portray. During the boom of the 1880s, the balance of political and economic power shifted from Anaheim to Santa Ana. So too did leadership in the effort to form a new county. E. E. Edwards, assemblyman from Santa Ana, felt the time was right for a sixth and hopefully final attempt to form the new county. He called for some heavy hitters, notably James McFadden and William Spurgeon, two very prominent Santa Ana businessmen. Both of these gentlemen went to Sacramento with very fat pockets. They returned with their pockets empty, but with victory at hand. That victory, so long in coming, represented a historic turning point. After years of growth and development under the flags of Spain, Mexico, and the United States, Orange County was finally on the map. Santa Ana became the county seat, and on August 1st, 1889, the county government went into operation. The first county courthouse, built at the turn of the century, stands, even today, as a powerful symbol of the political and economic emergence of Orange County. Orange County Centennial Legacy Program has been made possible by major grants from the Orange County Register, the Santa Margarita Company, and Parker Automotive Corporation.